Hey everybody, this is graphic designer Roberto Blake, and today I want to introduce a special guest on the channel, my good friend, photographer John Covington. Hey, how's it going everybody? Yeah, so you guys have heard me mention John a few times on the channel, especially when I'm doing uh, Photoshop retouching tutorials. A lot of times if I'm not doing my own photography, uh, John supplies the photography because he is a great and fantastic fashion photographer, and you should definitely check out his stuff on jcub.net. That is his website, so definitely make sure you're checking him out. So today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about the new 2014 MacBook Pro because uh, John has been kind enough to let us talk about it here on the channel and has brought it for us to showcase. Uh, I've been playing with this, um, you know, borrowing from John a couple of times and working with him on some stuff, and I'm really impressed with it, and I wanted to share it with you guys and talk to you about it today uh, because right now, I honestly feel that this is the best laptop on the market for Photoshop, photography work, and graphic design. And the reason I say that is because of the specs, the build quality, the form factor, comparatively for the price. You know I've always said that if you match the same specs for roughly the same price with a PC, that you can be competitive with a Mac. But the problem right now is that there isn't anything with these particular um, build specifications on the market for what we're talking about that competes with it. In 2015, I think that's going to change. And I specifically think that Dell is going to probably be one of the strongest competitors with this uh, machine. But right now, that's not the case. It is the front runner right now. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. John, you've been a PC guy your entire life, um, you know, aside from when you had to use Macs in college, like we all did. But, um, you know, tell us what your experience has been going from being a PC guy to finally having your first Mac and it being the new MacBook Pro. Well, I will say the, the transition is was was great. Like, I really like the simplicity of the operating system. It takes a little, it takes a minute to get used to it, but it's not much different. But it's just cleaner. And then the speed of of how the programs load are it, it's amazing. It's it's much different. That it's was a, a big thing. That was a big thing for me too when I like started messing with this. It. Like just launching the applications and seeing. In fact, guys, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna do um, a switch over when I do this in the editing for you guys to actually see the load time here. So I'm actually gonna record the load time uh, for launching Photoshop and then a few other apps while it's still open right here on the new MacBook Pro. So one 1,000, two 1,000, three, oh, it's open. Insane. Yeah, not even, not even the count of three 1,000 and it's already open. That's, that's nuts. That's just crazy. So I, I've never had that fast of a Photoshop launch. And you guys have seen me do editing and tutorials, so you know that I'm not lying about that. You know I'm not biased to it. Uh, you know, I love my Asus laptop. I talk about that all the time. But, you know, and maybe in the future I'll do some videos where I actually have that in my, you know, hands and we're working. But, you know, I just want to show you that. I'm just going to launch Illustrator while we're at it here. 1-1000, 2-1000, 3-1000, 4-1000. And Illustrator has brushes to load. 6-1000, 7-1000. 8, 1,000. So even with uh, Photoshop open, it only took an eight count for Illustrator, which uh, Illustrator has a lot more stuff to load up yeah. than Photoshop. And I already have Photoshop open while I'm doing that. I'm going to launch InDesign now. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 9, 1,000, 10, 1,000. Oh, that's it. So that's three Adobe applications like launching, launching completely after like boot up, startup, all that stuff that quickly. Back to back. So as far as speed, performance, buffer, I was like, I don't have a machine that can do that with eight gigs of RAM right now. Even my Asus laptop, even my iMac, you know, it can't do that. There's no way. It's just not going to happen. So that's really cool. And I'm really impressed with that. Uh, now, John, I know you don't usually work that way. You work in one program at a time most of the time. It's like, have you ever seen anything like that? Oh, no, no. I, I've, uh, with my desktops uh, in the past, like it, it's, it's more than double the, t the amount of time to, Crazy. to load those programs. Crazy. It's, it's extremely, it's extremely. Crazy. I'm just gonna launch Lightroom here while I and just see it like, oh, wow. That took literally like two seconds and it loaded up all of your uh, shots in high res from this wedding you did. Yes. So that's that's crazy. It's like and it's taking no time to like load these. That's that's insane. Wow. Okay, so like if you haven't been sold <laughs> on the speed and performance, if you didn't think it could be that much different or that much faster than whatever your setup is, the proof is in the pudding. So we've actually shown it here. Now again, uh, I've been using P 
PCs and Macs for a very long time. John, John has been a lifelong PC user. He's not necessarily an Apple guy, but this year he actually transitioned more into uh, you know the Apple workflow primarily because of the mobile app stuff from Adobe, right? Yes. And uh, the stuff that they did at Adobe Max. And also because you're getting into iPhone photography now. Yes. So, um, you know, that was a big part. I know that was a big part of your transition. And I know that you're also like a digital painter and an illustrator, kind of like uh, my other friend Kyle Lambert, who um, you guys don't remember Kyle Lambert. His uh, stuff went viral when he did the digital painting in the iPad of Morgan Freeman. Uh, if you haven't seen his stuff, definitely check his stuff out at um, kylelambert.co.uk. Uh, Kyle, you'll thank me for the shout out later. Uh, you don't need the extra publicity. You've got a lot more viewers than I do. But uh, anyway, so you wanted to get into stuff like that. So that's why you got the um, iPad that I guess we'll do in another video. Yes. But, um, you know, with the uh, Yosemite stuff, you can now oh, yeah. work a lot more seamlessly, right, between all three of your Apple devices because you've got the, um, the iPhone, the iPad, and you've got the MacBook Pro now. Yes. So you're like, you know, mobile iPad guy where I'm like, you know, just stationary over there with the <laughs> iMac. It's like, eh, nah. Yeah. What I like about it is that you can, like, everything's more streamlined to where, like, their ecosystem is amazing with the iPhone, the iPad, and, and the Mac. Because let's say I'm working on photos that I have on my iPhone and I want to, like, import them in the Lightroom. It syncs all that stuff together. I mean, you can also do that on a PC, on PC, but at the same time, and Android, with Android, but you gotta like drag and drop and do all this. Like you, um, Lightroom's doing it all through the cloud now, right? Yes. So it's all mobile and it's all seamless. So you could do that. And then, like, if you had like, uh, I know you're gonna get a. We're talking about. I'm helping you shop for a new Nikon. Yes. Um, and yours is probably gonna have the wireless, or we'll get you the wireless adapter because I know how you are with oh, yeah. that. So you want to do the wireless tethering, shooting directly to Lightroom. And you want to do all that stuff, and that's just going to be a lot, you know, better for you. I mean, you could do that with, um, you know, PC laptop. Don't get me wrong, but like you can control all the stuff because of the Nikon apps with your iPhone, so you don't have to do the remote shutter thing. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, bumping the camera. You don't have to worry about, you know, when you press down the button, any camera shake or vibration reduction. Oh yeah, yeah, none of this stuff you don't don't even have to worry about. So you know, that's going to be really convenient for you, and oh, yeah. then you know, it'll go right into Lightroom. Or if you didn't want to have the laptop with you, you could actually have it all go straight to the iPad because they can share the Wi-Fi. Yes. Yeah. So, that, okay, so for photographers, <laughs> this is why we're saying that, like, um, this workflow and why these, you know, devices are kind of better for you as, like, photographers because, like, the other thing is, I know John and, like, I, I try to travel light, but I know you pack a ton of equipment and you always, like, are bringing these heavy lights and all this stuff. So, like, the form factor of this thing, this thing is super light and it's super thin. Um, so, you know, just to give you guys a little bit of a better look and everything like that. Sitting in my lap, this thing weighs nothing and it's not even getting that warm. I'm, usually my complaint used to be these things used to get super hot, but they've done a lot better job on that in my opinion. And uh, so for you, having this and the iPad in there and having it all be super light is really convenient because you don't got it's what it's like less pounds to carry. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that and just the way that they work together because you know they're it's everything's all in house so it's it's just seamless it's streamlined streamlined so you know um now i i like i'm a big guy like for you know customization but i'm getting a little away from some of that stuff um you know i know you've been a pc guy and you've liked you know tinkering and doing your own thing like so how has your experience been with that having to lose that going into the Apple ecosystem? Because that's a big thing that keeps people. It's, it's, I'm never going to stop using Android specifically for that reason. I will always have both, if anything. I'm probably going to get like one of the iPhones, one of the newer iPhones, because of the mobile stuff. Uh, I know I'm getting the iPad. I actually am putting the order in probably later this week. Um, you know, so. Uh, I mean, let me ask you, like, so losing some of those customization things, losing the ability to tinker, what has that been like? Uh, that is the only that is the only downside to it. Like, I I, I, I I like Apple, but I love Android and I love the freedom of it. So it's it's the transition between the two. It takes a little getting used to because you can't do a lot of the things that you were able to do as far as you know moving things around uh, in Android, but. You know, it's the price of simplicity. Yeah, 
Yep, yep. You can't you can't have everything. You can't have everything the way you want it. Well, I can because I'm keeping my Android phone. So yes, unless you do that, which I, I I'm doing the same thing. I still right. have an Android phone and have that iPhone. So it's, it's you'll be happy with both. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not ditching PC. Anybody watching this, anybody who's a fan of mine, is like, don't get me wrong and don't think that I'm just shipping Apple now. It's that you guys should know by now that any product that I think is a good product, anything that I have a good experience with, I'm going to tout it and I'm going to say that, hey, you know, this is my experience. Take what you want from that and, you know, share your experience. Uh, you know, definitely feel free to let me know if you're having a different experience in the comment section. You guys always do and I love you for it. But, you know, the thing is, this is a monster. This is a monster and I really enjoy it. And when I can afford to get one as well, I'm going to be doing that just like I'm doing with the iPad. Uh, you know, I've enjoyed doing the mobile stuff on yours, especially like with the Adobe apps, which we're going to cover later. But, you know, I like, and you guys know I love my iMac, but I love my Asus laptop too. And I love my Android phone. And, you know, they've been with me for the longest time. And, um, you know, eventually when I decide to go to the upgrades, like when I do my gaming rig, which will be a whole nother thing on this channel, building that from scratch, I'm ordering piecemeal components for that. So that's gonna be a PC because I still say that for gaming, you need a PC, uh, period. I mean, one, a lot of your games are gonna be on that. And then two, the thing about Apple products is that ability to tinker, that ability to customize and upgrade and soup things up that you know we need over on the Windows side. So if you're a gearhead like me, you still want that experience. So you're still gonna be you know Windows or you'll go Hackintosh um, and you'll just put parallels on there and you'll have both operating systems on a Frankenstein machine because, you know, it is the season. But, yeah. you know, um, if you can't do that or if you don't want to do that and you're just like, you know what, I'm a pure artist, I'm a pure photographer and I want the best, most powerful machine I can get. I want a clean experience and I want to just work. Then this is the kind of thing you'll want and we're, that's why we're showing this. We want you to be able to be in a position to make up your own mind, have an honest opinion, but we want to share our experiences with you. Oh yeah. You know, um, tell me, like, uh, we saw a little bit of it here in Lightroom and everything like that, but when you're like importing something like fresh, like 500 photos, like how long does that take? Oh, not long at all. I, I would say a little under a minute. It's, it's extremely, it's, nice. it's a lot faster than I've For like, I've you know, before. for like somewhere between, usually, I know you shoot like between 500, 1,000 photos, so you're getting that in there in like under a minute. Yes. And see, that's fantastic. I don't get that. Like, uh, I, I literally cannot do that. And uh, my machine's an older machine, you know, full disclosure, and I don't have an SSD drive. The thing about this is the uh, flash hard drive storage is directly into the motherboard, so it's a lot less latency, it's a lot faster, and you get those better transfer speeds. Um, even if you get an SSD drive, since it's not directly into the motherboard, you have those issues. So unless your PC is something like an origin PC, for a laptop and it's got like an M SATA drive, that's the closest thing you're gonna get to a PC experience for the MacBook Pro. But a souped up um, Origin PC laptop is going to cost more than a souped up um, MacBook Pro. But I will say that you can go higher on the specs and you can customize. So you'll end up paying more. There is a circumstance where Mac is not the most expensive thing on the market and that is what it is. So you know, just keep that in mind. So I think I think we've covered a lot of ground here, and we've like you know shown them uh, some of what we're talking about and everything like that. So the specs on this one, um, you know, this is the uh, eight gig um, with the um, i5 processors. This is the 13 inch. 15 inch. Oh, this is the 15 inch. Okay, yeah, this is the 15 inch, and I believe it's the i5 uh, processors. It is the um, eight gigs, and it's the uh, uh, what uh, 256 storage. Yes. Yeah, it's the 256 storage. So, I mean, yeah, so um, I'm going to have, like, description links to that stuff and what the pricing is down below, but I'm pretty sure this is, like, the, the like, 1499 or 1599 model. It's something like that. So if you're looking to go into the new MacBook Pro and you want the experience of knowing, okay, from graphic designers and photographers what this is, because, you know, John is a digital artist and a graphic designer. He does that kind of work in Photoshop, too. Um, you know, as you know, I'm a graphic designer, digital artist, and video guy. So when we say that, you know, for graphic design and photography and Photoshop art that right now this is probably the best thing out there we're not kidding and you know our opinion here isn't biased on this it's just what it is um, now do I think that will change yes I absolutely think that um, there will be a competitor and it will likely be Dell Asus and I think there'll be a new version possibly of the Razer uh, gaming laptop that might be comparable um, you know, I have to look a little more into the specs on that one, but that one's going to be pricier because it's a gaming machine. So, um, I know a lot of you decide to use gaming rigs and double them as, uh, 
graphic design rigs, and that's fine, but there are things that gaming rigs are set up to do that are not graphic design friendly per se. So anyway, that's a whole nother video. Uh, John, you know, thanks for letting us uh, show this to the audience and everything yeah, no like problem. that. Um, guys, this is John Covington. Make sure you check out his photography work and art at jcub.net. Uh, you need to get on Behance, man, because oh, people yeah. need to see more of your actual digital art because you do some impressive stuff. We okay. actually did a speed art collab where you saw his hand illustration. He's a traditional artist and painter as well of Optimus Prime, and you need to be putting the photography of your paintings like on Behance for people to do that. And you should even consider uh, selling like um, photography of your paintings as like prints to blow them up. That I think that'd be good for you. Oh yeah. yeah. But um, we'll anyway, uh, well, we hope you guys enjoyed this. We hope you uh, enjoyed our little rundown on the 2014 MacBook Pro. Uh, stay tuned for more videos on the channel. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content. As always, you guys, thanks for watching. And don't forget, create something awesome today.